All right, so what we're going to do today um, with this uh, lovely lady, we're going to do a liposuction of the abdomen and the back, and we're going to do some, some transfer into the buttocks, and we're also going to do some transfer into the hip over here. So, you know, the most important part for me as a surgeon is actually the, uh, the marking portion when the patient's kind of standing, because once we bring the patient onto the um, operating room table, everything, you know, patient's laying down, we have, we have no marks anymore. So, you know, I'm, I'm kind of evaluating what I need to do and what I need to accomplish. And you can see, you know, from her standpoint, she has a lot of fat on this area here, because the goal is to get that nice hourglass shape and to get that, that curve in the lower back here, which thoroughly defines this area. And then, you know, the other thing that I'm doing is that, you know, this little diamond over here, which we call the, the, the sacral diamond right over here, when I carve this out and get this nice and thin, it creates that separation between the top part of the buttocks and this gets better definition. So all I'm doing right now is I'm, I'm defining and I can see where her natural curve of the, the buttocks is. She has a little bit of some cellulite on the um, skin over here. I always tell patients, you know, we don't have a 100% cure for cellulite. It'll always be better, it'll never be perfect. And then, you know, so right now, you can see I, I've defined the outer outlines of, of the buttocks, which is where I'm gonna be contemplating injecting the, the fat. Now I'm gonna see, you know, where her waist is, the, the portion of where her waist comes in the thinnest and the, the narrowest. And then I'm gonna see where I create my lines. And then what I like to do is, I always like to just draw my visual shape in my head. So that's how I want her to look. Come in and out, nice curve. In and out. And I use a variety of different colors, de depending on what they're for. And then after I draw my kind of anatomical lines, then I'm kind of just kind of sh shading in, doing a little topographical map of where the liposuction is gonna be. So, you know, I kind of, outline the, the areas which are, are deeper and greater with my um, pen so that when I'm on the table, I know exactly what I'm doing. And obviously you gotta do that on both sides. But you can see, you know, she's got these little rolls here which I really gotta thin down so this skin sticks down to the underlying muscle. And you know, right here, this is, this is the most important part. This fat right here, where I have this kind of X in, that's really important, that's something that, that you see a lot of surgeons miss, you bring this in that really creates that curve and that concavity of the lower back. Bring your arms down there. And then you know, I ask you to bring your arms down and then I'm getting this little bit of some stuff that people always complain about when their arms are down by the bra roll. I can see that better in, in that position. And then from this standpoint, you know, you gotta see what we got to do in the buttocks. And you can see when you're looking at it, she's kind of mostly deficient in this lateral aspect and it comes out towards the hips. So I always mark where the center of the buttocks are just that's the point of, of maximum projection. Then I kind of see where the mid portion of, of the buttocks are. I'm gonna catch a little bit of that indentation over here to fill that in so that we get that nice curve in and then this comes all the way in and then I need to filter out a little bit on the, the top portion of that. So I do use some drains. It'll be one drain over here. Typically my incisions are these two points here, one in here, in the armpits here, and then one in, in the fold. So that's pretty much it for the markings of the back. What we're doing right now, I'm, this is the same patient from before. We're doing a uh, liposuction with fat transfer. We're gonna liposuction her entire abdomen and her entire back. Prior to this, and like I said, I'm in the liposuction portion of things right now. You see this is the liposuction cannula. Prior to this, we filled up the whole abdominal area with a tumescent solution. That solution kind of bathes the fat it's got some um, medicine in it, some lidocaine to help with some of the numbing during the operation. But this is done during a general anesthetic, so she feels nothing. You can see what we're doing is, you know, since she's doing a transfer, we're harvesting this fat in a sterile container over here. And you can see how the kind of the fat separating from the, the fluid. At the end of the operation, when everything's separated, we're gonna use that fat and we're gonna transfer it back into the, in, into the uh, gluteal area to get a better um, shape and to get a better, to get a better contour. Since she's had prior surgery, things are always a little bit harder. But you can see, you know, we're getting some nice, nice, good, clean yellow fat, um, you know, which is some some great fat to help transfer. You know, typically in a uh, fat transfer, you know, out of all the fat that we collect, approximately, you know, 80% of that, 80, 85% of that fat that we collect in this area is fat that's viable for the 
the transfer. Obviously, we can't separate out the ones that are they're good and, one, and the ones that are bad because they all look the same. So typically, in any sort of a, a fat transfer patient, I always tell patients that you know expect you know somewhere between 40 and 50 percent of the fat that I transfer into the patient to survive. You know, so I always found that harvesting the fat with a larger cannula, um, you know, has less damage on the the surrounding fat cells. Um, you know, so we try to harvest as much fat as, as possible, but you know. With this part of the operation, with the, the liposuction, I mean, the goal is really to, to, create, to create shape and to create form. You know, she wants to, uh, she's a taller lady. She wants to have a, a narrower waist, um, you know, a uh, centerita. So that, that's one of the things that we're really focusing on, really trying to bring, bring this in like this and, and accentuate her, her waistline as much as humanly possible. With all these areas of, of liposuction, I do use some drains. Um, you know, the drains are there to help with um, the, the fluid underneath the skin afterwards and prevent the accumulation of fluid collections. You know, the, these are what the drains look like. They, they go underneath the skin, one in, in the lower abdomen and come out and they, they collect into a little collection ball. But you know, the key thing is here is just getting all the fat. I mean, you know, summer's coming up, everybody wants to look thin. So it's, it's, it's very important. You know, everyone wants to have a good shape. Nobody wants to be a square. So that, that's really the importance of the, the liposuction. I mean, I think in this operation, the liposuction is definitely more important than the fat transfer. Because by carving out the waistline, you already get a better shape of the, the buttocks um, you know, before you even put any of the fat transfer in. Okay, so now we're getting ready to um, in, inject the fat into the buttocks. We've already done all the liposuction of the, of the abdomen and the back, so we've created that form around the buttocks and now this is kind of the icing on the cake and you know this is where we're going to add that that projection and we're going to add that that shape to the buttocks um, you know th this patient wants to go on the bigger side so we're going to put a, a bunch of fat in like i said remember you know typically you're going to keep somewhere around 40 to 50 percent of the fat that i put in there everybody's different what has to happen is that you know i'm, I'm injecting this fat into the buttocks the one thing i'm not doing is is I'm not bringing the blood supply with the fat because obviously fat's very tiny. When we transplant a kidney, a liver, or a spleen, the main thing we do is we're bringing the arteries and the veins with it. So for this fat to survive, the blood vessels from the surrounding normal tissue need to grow into the fat so that the fat gets blood supply and, and can live. But, um, you know, so that way we have to over, we have to over in, inject the amount of fat that we want. Um, also, you know, what's very important is when we're injecting the fat, we're trying to get the fat in between as much normal tissue as possible so that giving the fat the best chance of uh, new blood vessels growing from the surrounding tissue in, into the fat. But you can see we're already getting a pretty nice shape. And, you know, the thing that I'm looking at, and like I said, this is kind of my my art form, you know, I'm looking at everyone's buttocks and, and they're all different. You know, I'm looking at the height of the buttocks and I'm looking at the width of it. So, you know, some people have, have long buttocks, some people have short buttocks and, you know, everyone's different. So, you know, different, different results can be obtained. And in her case, you know, she has very little cellulite. So, you know, she should be pretty smooth afterwards. Sometimes people have a lot of indentations nice. and, and in those patients, you know, I have to break up the indentations and, you know, typically where there's a lot of indentations and a lot of cellulite, that area where that is tends to be a little bit flatter because the skin doesn't expand. But I'm pretty aggressive with those and I've gotten some pretty decent results. Then, So this, this one right here, this is my, my 10th syringe. So I've already injected 600 cc's of fat into her left um, buttocks, gluteal area. And you can see, you know, you wanna get a picture from the bottom just to show the, the difference between the two. Now I'm going to go to the other side and, um, you know, inject another 10 syringes or 600 cc's from the bottom. And then I'm going to come to the top and then inject some more from an another direction. And you can see, you know, she's, she's expanding nicely and really getting a nice, really getting a nice shape, which I'm very happy with. You know, and I also inject, depending on the person, you know, I inject some fat into the hips. Um, there's some indentations and stuff, you know, everything's all about creating the aesthetic line. And you can see how it's, how it's you know, moving up nicely. You know, there comes a point 
when doing this operation that you can't inject any more fat. You know, when the buttock starts getting too tight and too tense, you know, in, injecting more fat is just ludicrous. It's gonna, none of that fat's gonna survive because it's just gonna be fat layered on top of fat. It's not gonna get any blood supply. It's just gonna die over the ensuing couple of weeks and you're increasing your risk of infection secondary to, you know, death of the fat, which we call fat necrosis. Five. So now, this is my 15th syringe, so we got 900 cc's of fat on each side. And you can see she's getting some extreme amounts of projection, which is what she wanted. Now remember, she wanted, you know, everyone's ideal is different. This patient wanted something on the larger side. So my job as a plastic surgeon is to try to get her that. And every time I come in and out, I'm going in a different plane. So. Like I said, I'm trying to get all that fat throughout the entirety of the buttocks, not just lumped in one spot. And like I said, you know, part of the important part of this operation is, is really the liposuction. I mean, that's the part that I think is the key. You know, I have a lot of patients who just from me liposuctioning them say that their buttocks looks bigger and then people swear they had a fat transfer. So, you know, creating that tiny waste is, is you know and getting the correct you know hip to waist ratio is is definitely the key